all Swift UI layout happens in three simple steps. And understanding these steps is the key to getting great layouts every time. The steps are, first, a parent proposes a size for its child. Second, based on that information, the child then chooses its own size and the parent must respect that choice. And third, the parent then positions the child in its coordinate space. Now behind the scenes, SwiftUI performs a fourth step. Although it stores positions and sizes as floating point numbers, when it comes to rendering, SwiftUI rounds off any pixels to the nearest values so our graphics remain sharp. Now, those three rules might seem simple, but they allow us to create a hugely complicated layouts where every view decides how and when it resizes without the parent having to get involved. To demonstrate these rules in action, I wanna make a very, very simple text view here with a background modifier. I'll say text, hello world, with a background of red. Now, you can see in my preview here, the background color sits tightly around the text itself. It takes up only just enough space to fit the content we provided. Now think about this question. How big is Content View? Now, as you can see, the body of Content View, the thing it renders on the screen, is some text with a background color. And so the size of Content View is exactly and always the size of its body, no more and no less. This is called being layout neutral. Content view doesn't have a size of its own, actually doesn't really exist at all as a thing, at runtime at least, and instead just happily adjusts to fit whatever size is needed. Now, way back in project three, I explained to you that when you apply a modifier to a view, we actually get back a new view type called modified content, which stores both our original view and its modifiers. This means when we apply a modifier, the actual view that goes into the hierarchy is the modified view, not the original one. So in our simple background example, that means the top level view inside content view is the background. And inside that is the text. Backgrounds are layout neutral, just like content view. So it'll just pass on any layout information as needed. You can end up with a whole chain of layout information being passed around until a definitive answer comes back. Now, if we put this into the three-step layout system, we end up with a kind of a, a conversation, a bit like this. So if the UI is going to say, hey, uh, content view, you have the whole screen to yourself. How much of it do you need? So the parent view is proposing a size. Content view says, well, listen, I don't actually care. I'm layout neutral. I'm going to ask my child, hey, background, you have the whole screen to yourself. How much of it do you need? Parent view proposes the size. The background says, well, I don't care as well. I'm also layout neutral. Let me ask my child, hey, text, you can have the whole screen to yourself. How much of it do you need? Parent view proposes the size again. A text says, well, I have the letters H-E-L-L-O, comma, space, W-O-R-L-L-D, exclamation mark, uh, in the default font. And so I need X pixels wide by Y pixels high. I don't need the whole screen, just that. So the child is now choosing its size. This goes back up to the background. The background is like, okay, got it. Um, hey, content view, I need X by Y pixels, please. And so the content view says, okay, right on, dude. Hey, SwiftUI, I need X by Y pixels. And so SwiftUI says, okay, nice. That leaves lots of space. So I'm gonna put you at your size you requested in the center of the available space. And that's the parent positioning the child in its coordinate space. And so when we say text, hello world, like this, dot background red, our text view becomes a child of its background. Swift UI effectively works its way from the bottom to the top when it comes to a view and its modifiers. Now consider this layout. Text hello world dot padding of 20, then background red. And this time the conversation's more complicated because padding 
no longer offers all its space to its child. It needs to subtract 20 points from each size to make sure there's enough space for the padding. And then when the answer comes back from the text view, padding adds 20 points on each size to pad it out as requested. So it's more like this. So if the Y says you can have the whole screen, how much do you want? Content view. Content view says, well, you can have the whole screen, how much do you want? Background. Background says, hey, um, you can have the whole screen, how much do you want? Padding. Padding then says, you can have the whole screen minus 20 points on each side. How much would you want to the text? Again, text is X by Y. Padding reports back X by Y plus 20 points on each side. The background then passes that on X by Y plus 20 points. Content view says X by Y 20 points. And 50 Y then sent as a result. Now, if you remember, the order of our modifiers matters, which means uh, the code of background with padding 20 and background with uh, first, then padding 20, yield different results. And hopefully now you can see why. Background is layout neutral. It determines how much space it needs by asking its child how much space it needs and using that same value. So the child of background is the text view, which is now directly, then it'll fit snugly around the text. But when the child is the padding around here, then it will receive back the adjusted values that include the padding amount. Now, there are two interesting side effects that come as a result of these layout rules. First, if your view hierarchy is wholly layout neutral, then it will automatically take up all available space. For example, shapes and colors by default are layout neutral. So if your view contains a color and nothing else, it'll automatically just fill the screen. I could say here, let's just use color.red, bang, full screen straight away, it's expands to fill. Remember, color.red is a view in its own right. But because it's layout neutral, it can be drawn at any size. Now, when we use it inside background, the abridged conversation kind of means this. Uh, the background says, uh, hey, text, you have the whole screen, how much do you want? Text has X by Y points, I don't need the rest. The background then says, hey, Color.red, you can have X by Y points. How much that do you want? And it'll say, I don't care. I'm layout neutral. X by Y points sounds good to me. The second interesting side effect is one we faced earlier. If we use frame on an image that's not resizable, we get a larger frame without the image inside changing size. This might have been confusing before, but it makes absolute sense once you think about it because the frame is the parent of the image. Content view will offer the frame the whole screen. The frame reports back, it says I want 300 by 300. The frame asks a child inside it what size it wants, and that image not being resizable will say, hey, I want 64 by 64, for example. And that frame then positions the image inside the center of itself, 64 64 inside 300 by 300. Now, when you listen to Apple's own Swift UI engineers talking about modifiers, you'll hear them refer to them as views. They'll say the frame view, the background view, and so on. And I think that's a really great mental model to help understand what's going on here. Applying modifiers makes new views rather than modifying existing views in place.